Hello and welcome back to Ginger Man. I'm creeping west again. I find myself in Pole Beth. Now, about last month, I came to West Calder and on the way here, I passed Pole Beth and I thought, you know something? That place looks interesting and I'm gonna have to stop there and check it out. So here I am on a cold November's morning. But if you don't live in Scotland, you won't know that we're getting absolutely battered by storms every other day. So I found a cam in the storm uh, and here I am. So, Paul Beth, show me what you got. Peace. So I've parked up in Old School Avenue now. That's probably the coolest street name I've parked up in anywhere. Someone lives in, wait for it, 69 Old School Avenue. If someone told you that's their address, would you believe them? There it is. Welcome to Paul Beth, home of James Paraffin Young. This would just be a normal road into the village any other time of the year, but in autumn, it's glowing. Over here we have Limefield House. That must be the big fancy house around here. Just as you come into it, I'm sure we'll hear more about that. Lime Field, remember that name. It's down here. Oh, aye. There's some water action. If I remember rightly, there was a bunch of rivers and waterways that ran alongside the Bings. But don't worry, I'm not going to the Bings today because I've been to the Bings already. And technically, they're in West Calder and we're in Pool Beth today. I thought I was about to come and see a bar and restaurant but it's gone here it once stood the furs let's go here honestly I hate walking alongside roads they're so noisy you can't really film peacefully and in two minutes out of the roadway and alongside these little bungalow cottage things that look amazing. Before I went to West Calder, I was unaware that this place existed. Um, and obviously when I went to West Calder, I realized this area has a rich, rich history. Um, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, if it's Paul Beef or Paul Beth. I'm gonna say Paul Beth sounds correct. Paul Beef sounds what we'd call it in Fife. Paul Beth's what they'd call it more to the west, so we'll go with that. Anyway, um, I'm going on a bit here, but what I wanted to say is, uh, I didn't really want to say anything. Oh wow, look at this. There's a whole standing point and everything and waterfalls. I think this is the Limefield Falls that we've seen on the board in West Calder. Limefield Falls. Welcome to Limefield Falls, a unique feature on Harwood Water. This water feature was built around 1875 by the owner of Limefield House, James Paraffin Young. Young was a friend of the explorer and missionary David Livingston and is said that he built the falls in honour of his friend, 
One story claims that Lincoln Falls are based on Livingston's descriptions of Mosa Oi Tunya. Nice. This is absolutely perfect. I think there's a little woodland walk along there, right along the water. It's actually designed beautifully, this. I think this is... This is a little uh, bit of magic here in Pool Bay. A little bit of magic. This is a cracking little spot here. And there's a bench as well that you can enjoy it from. And you don't have to walk far either, it's just right there. An absolute natural beauty spot. But it's also got like that presence of man around it because obviously uh, Paraffin Young designed and built it all and paid for it, etc. Just as a farm was going into the residential part of Pool Beth, the path swings me into the woods. Oh, this is ideal, because the woods really come alive in autumn. It's the, the woods time to sh put on a party, a colour party. West Calder this way. Well, we've been to West Calder. Limefield Falls have been there, but we're going to come back through this way. It feels like the whole place is intertwined with a network of woodlands. I can see some sort of bridge down there. I'm going to come back down to this bit. Right, I'm on the hunt for a little shop right now to find some snacks uh, before I adventure on. We're not an old school avenue anymore. I don't know where we are. Well, I'm back out into the main road of Pope Beth, and it's a petrol station here. There's the Scott Mid. If I was going to get ripped off there at garage prices. Oh, look at this outside the co-op. Pope Beth map. I'm here. Right, so we missed the church. We've seen the. We've seen this bit. Oh wow. There's loads to see, and we can maybe pop it to the zoo as well. The village of Pope Beth, built mostly during the 1950s and 1960s. Stands out on land previously occupied by stands on land previously occupied by farms and mine works. Beth takes its name from one of those farms in the part of Beth known as Chapelton from an ancient chapel. Both are now gone. The part land beside Harwood Water was part of the estate of Limefield House, once home of James Paraffin Young. In 2020, the population of the village was estimated at 2,321. Finally, three years I've been looking around places and nowhere. Not one sign has ever told me the place's population. This sign in Pole Beth is, hands down, the best sign in Scotland I've seen so far. Beautiful, easy to read map, perfectly, perfectly lined, detailed information, quickly, all in one little paragraph. The perfect place for a ginger man to eat his lunch slash breakfast. There we go, we're in the community hub. So, this must be... Ah, it is, that's the actual building, the community hub. That's where it all goes down. There's my muddy bench. I sit here, about to eat my breakfast. I just want to thank my patron, Legends who, without their support, I wouldn't be eating Link sausage on a roll right now. I'd just be having some homemade home ham and cheese sandwiches or something. So, thanks guys. I get to sample the local cuisine from the, ki the kitchen at Scotmed. Thanks guys. Um, cheers. If you want to join the patron list, link at the bottom. Right. I'm back walking again, and there's a staircase up there. Now, I don't know what it leads to. 
So I'm going to check it out. There we go. Just takes you to a, just like almost like a viewing bit. Where you can see the bings and have your lunch. I should have had my lunch there. Slash breakfast. I shot my load too soon at the other bench. And here we go. I think the road there just leads over to West Calder. So this is like a little industrial a bit in between. And then you're into West Calder because there's the new houses over there. I remember. What's actually more interesting is you can see that there are five sisters from here. Whereas in West Calder you can only see two. James Paraffin Young was a Scottish chemist best known for his method of distilling paraffin from coal and oil shales. He is often referred to Paraffin Young. That's quite interesting. I mean, Scotland is known for its, its inventors, its innovators, and its, its part in creating the modern world as it is today. And I guess James Young, he's up there. He's definitely up there with that list of people because obviously in the Industrial Revolution period we relied heavily on oil and coal and gas, all of these natural resources now that we're looking to say uh, maybe we shouldn't use so much of them. But he didn't know. I don't think anyone would have really known the damage that these practices could or would cause to the, to the planet. And now they're integral to our our uh, civilization, so we're kind of attached to them in a way that we don't want to be attached to them. But anyway, that's me thinking deeper beyond Paul Bethia. When I was looking online, I remembered that there's a zoo here, so I'm going to go check out the zoo, because how often do you come somewhere that has a zoo? We're going past the co-op, past the Murray, it's the West Calder fire station. There's the Paul Beth, right in the heart of the community. And they've licensed the name of the, the village, so perfect. Right, where's the zoo? This is pretty mad, because you're just walking through a housing estate, but you're going to a zoo. I can see something now, right through there. I can see big high fences. That has to be the zoo. I wonder if it's open. Have you been to the Five Sisters Zoo before? Um, I've, I knew it was here because I keep seeing it in signs every time I go places, but I have never been this close to it. It's there. Oh, no way, I'm walking down this. Oh, shit the bed. I'm just having to walk on the road here. Tall sus. Oh, right, mate. That's one, two, three. Three tree swing graves. Okay, so one minute you're in Paul Beth in a housing estate, next minute it feels like you're in the middle of nowhere where there's no pavements exist anymore. Right, what do we see? Leaping lemurs. It's a leopard. Is that a snow leopard? I ain't got no snow leopard here, surely. It's a bloody lion. This is the real deal, it's a full on zoo. I thought it was just going to be like one or two animal pens, a couple of cows or something. Nope, we've got lemurs, lions. Looks like they're getting ready for Christmas as well. All the Christmas excitement's happening. We're in. So, for 17.95, look what you get. All of a sudden, we're in Paul Beth, and now we're looking at meerkats. This is the best day of my life. They've got a whole thing about the story of the zoo. 2005. The collection of animals began with several rabbits, guinea pigs, goats and pigs. I love goats. All good things begin with a goat. Oh, look at them. I've got a whole lemur set bit. Oh, this is amazing. 2007. Information. 2010. In 2010, the zoo leased land from the council with plans to create more enclosures and picnic play park area. With the income from the soft play area, this helped the zoo survive through another winter. This is amazing. I am so glad I've come here. I'm so glad I've paid the money and came in here today. 
2012. Word spread about the arrival of the bears. Bears? There's bears here. There's bears. Oh my god. There's a. Uh... Oh no. Something burned to the ground. Something bad happened at some point too. This is incredible. A full story. Obviously, I'm not going to read it all because it's heavy on information. And when you come yourself, you can read it. Off camera, I'm going to have a good read of all of this. But I'm just going to take you around the best bits. These ones are shy. The common marmoset. There's a marmoset right there. Just right in front of us. Hey, pal, you're not shy. You're a cool marmoset. There's a ferret in here somewhere. Mustela cutioris furo. Hello, Mr. Ferret. Beware of the ferrets. I can't see a ferret. He's being shy. He's in here. Monkeys? It's a fox. You telling me that's not what chihuahuas have come from? Look at that. Okay, this is my new favourite fox because it looks like a chihuahua. Look at that. Fennec fox. Oh my god, it's so cute. I want to cuddle it. I bet it doesn't want to cuddle me though. Hello. Please do not touch the glass. I'm trying not to. We're going into the lost kingdom. Oh my god. It's a crocodile. That's a crocodile. This is the African dwarf crocodile. It's one of the smallest at five feet long. It still looks like it could eat me. It's a rattlesnake. Classic Asian water dragon. Emerald monitor. This is way more than what I was expecting. Uh, for me, so far, the star of the show is the fox. Um, but this is more than what I expected. I'm so happy to be here right now. Yeah, if you're watching this, just book, book the tickets and come and support this because this is amazing Asian short claw daughter where are they? where's the, the short claw daughters at? black and white rough lemur look at his eyes they're absolutely pinging his head hey pal I did not know that about lemurs, but I'm all about supporting the lemurs because they're cool. Look at these ones. They're just chilling. Look at their tails. They're sleeping. They're all huddled up, sleeping together. There's some big animal over here that I can see in here. What is that? Oh hi, what is this? Just take a walk through Rainbow Land. So I just seen an ostrich and it was making the weirdest noise like <coughs> These rabbits are living their best life for sure. This is like a Christmas wonderland. I love this place. The guinea pigs. Just chilling eating all the leaves. This is like guinea pig heaven around here. Look at the homey houses. Right, let's go see some bears. Guinea pigs are cool, but I had a guinea pig as a pet. I've never had a bear as a pet. 
Oh, no, these are the bears that have passed away. Oh, no. Look at the wrong thing. Right, let's go see them. We can sponsor a bear. Look a leopard here. Where's the lick? Cloudy leopard are one of the most ancient cat species alive today. Oh! I can see the cloudy leopard. Hello. Hello. There we go. Oh. He's moving. Clean tits wee hoose. I'm not gonna lie, I got like a... I got that excited feeling in my belly when that leopard just walked up to the glass there. That was exciting. Exciting. It's officially the closest... Can I hear that? I think... It may be the ostrich. I can hear something. Is that a bear? Is that a bear? Oh my god! This must be what it feels like walking through the woods of Canada, only you've not got a protective fence around you. You just hear the bears roaring. Actually, we've got a double fence here. Forget about the bear, we have snow leopards. No oh, way, yeah, I love leopards. I can hear bears growling, but I got distracted, right? I came over this way and there's like snow leopards. Not only is this place like a beautiful zoo, it's an incredible place just to walk around. You won't see this sign often. Goats, donkeys, Shetland ponies, sheep, cheetahs. Just in this enclosure there's a snow leopard. That I can't get close enough to see it. He's kind of down creaking in there. I can see him, but I don't think you'll be able to see him. He's sort of just lurking around down there. Snow leopard guy. Right, we're going down this way. This place is incredible. My whole episode should just be this place. Just totally forgotten about Paul Beth. Pig and me goat. I love a goat, it does stink though. Oh, there's a goat on the top of the hill. They're all up the hill, the goats. It's a donkey. They've got spaniel ears. Like dogs. So, I mean, what I'm going to say about this is it's like the, the most ultimate epic um, woodland walk with bears and leopards and foxes and all manner of things I think this is where you come see the cheetah at Where's the cheetah? Well, the cheetah's cheating me Oh no, they're over there! But you can't see them from here, I have to go down the other way It's mad to think, look there's the the houses in Pobeth just over there Hello cheetah yeah, the first cheetah I've ever met. What? You okay? Is it one pin? Oh, it's only got three legs. It's a three-legged cheetah. Oh. Oh. Hello. Hello. Oh, I want to cuddle it. It oh, looks like so cute. A three-legged cheetah. This must be an absolutely Fantastic job to have. Oh man. I wonder if we'll get to interact with the cheetahs, because that cheetah looked really playful. It'd probably eat your face off, but man. I love this place, right? Let's go and see if we can see a bear and we'll head back into Polbeth. Because I could spend all day in here. We've not got enough uh, SD card for that. He's <laughs> the coolest ones. Look at his face. Hey, pal. Hey, guys. I think these ones are looking for food. Maybe cheeky, cheeky grins on their face. I love animals. Like all animals are, the, are great. Donkeys are cool. Actually, the donkey's really cute. Oh, there's a donkey. Oh, well, they're proper goats. Oh, well, they're Barbary sheep. They look like goats to me. Barbary sheep. They look tough. Oh no, wait. Yeah, yeah. Owl dad. 
They have a short reddish brown coat and powerful horns that curve over their back. The rocky hills of North Africa. They're not like our sheep. Degus. <laughs> it's a degu. That's cool. It's like a guinea pig. Hey Degu. Good day to you too. What are this mice? The smallest rodents in Britain. They weigh 10 kilos. 10 kilos? Oh. 10 grams. There's one there. You see it? That is the smallest rodent in Britain. Uh, oh, there's another one. They are tiny. Just to put this into perspective, I come to a zoo, I don't see a big giant bear, but I see the smallest rodent in Britain. A tiny little mouse. Fantastic. I was looking for some Scottish wild cats. They're right there, you can see their backs. This place is massive, it just keeps going on. The Corsac fox, there's another one. Oh man, he's slightly bigger than the last one. I love foxes. I love their colour. Hello. I feel like a kid at Christmas here. I get that excited feeling in my belly. Oh, there's a northern hawk owl just chilling. There he's there. Just a classic. Oh, and another one. There's a yellow pruned Amazon parrot. Ah. Scurvy do. European eagle owls, that's massive. You can see it through the glass, but you can see it this way. The size of that, it's got sun in its gub. It's staring at me. It's hoping to see a badger, but no luck. I know badgers are nocturnal. You can see badgers in Scotland. Usually did by the side of the road, sadly. Eurasian lynx, Eurasian badger. You got the option Arctic wolves, lions. Will we see an Arctic wolf? I'd love to see one. Oh my god, it's right there. There's an arctic wolf, and dogs are my favourite animal, so that by association makes wolves my favourite animal. No one's having a pee. Man, they're... Okay, these might be my favourite now, the Arctic wolves. It's a lion. Hello, lion. Lion. That is noisy. He is. I can't explain how loud that is. It's like bassy, deep. Oh. There's a lion right there, look! Wow! The majestic beast! He's huge! It's the biggest one yet, we've still not seen the bear though. Right, I'm back to see the bears. Turns out it was the lion I could hear earlier, but I caught it, giving me the lion noise. The bears love the woodlands, don't they? So they've got their own natural woodland, and they're European brown bears, so they're still in Europe. Um, and I do believe that bears were in Scotland at some point, long, long, long ago. But because we live on an island and we hunted them off the island, there's no way for them to travel back, because they can't build boats, bears. So we have to build the boats and bring them back. <laughs> These guys are so cool. They are not shy. Hey, a pal. They're like showing off. They know. Just as I thought I'd seen it all, oh, there's the Eurasian lynx prowling. That's a cool guy as well. Oh, wow. Hello. Oh, he's growling. He does not. He's protecting his bone. Gives me a wee noise. There's the fishing cat. 
at the window. It's chilling at the shed window. Snow Owl. Hello. Wow, oh, that's beautiful. Where's your little kissing? Look. Parrot love. Come on then. <laughs> Come on then. And that's me left the zoo. Amazing, there's even a restaurant and a soft play area for kids. This place has got it all. Well, I'm so happy I got to visit here today. I'm so happy I came in, paid the ticket because it's well worth the ticket price. Amazing. Right. I'm going to go back to the woodlands I, I started at, get the drone up and we'll wrap up this day. This amazing day in Polbeth. You ever seen that road sound before? Not me neither. That's a frog. I wonder if the cows in the field know how close they are to a lion. Right so, I'm back out on the main road um, and I'm heading back to where the, oh it's loud, the limefield falls where um, and we've got the drone up from somewhere around there and then we'll call it a day here in Pobeck because I think I spent most of my time in the zoo A nice open park, all this space and no flying fox It's a disappointment for the children, uh, West Slovian Council a flying fox in there. Spice up your park a little. Right, I've come back to here where I was earlier, where I said I would come back to. Because it looks really nice here. There's the viaduct for the train track. It's next to the river. It looks actually so beautiful I'm actually surprised that I never came this way the first time because this is all what I like
Well, I just had a stunning, stunning drone flight. This really is a beautiful time of year, especially when you get the aerial shots of the trees changing colour. You can't beat it. And I guess that ends my day here in uh, Paul Beth. What an incredible place. My, you know, I, I drove through it and all I seen was a sign that says, home of James Paraffin Young, and I thought, that place must mean something. And then I seen stuff in the signs for West Calder, the zoo, the falls, and I thought, right, Paul Beth's got a little bit about it. Um, I mean, we're, we've even got this little viaduct here, just for extra added value. Um, no big deal. But other than that, I reckon, if you're watching this and you've never heard of this place, you've got to get here, go to the zoo, check it out, come for a walk, bring the kids, bring the dog, bring the granny, bring everyone, because this place is worth visiting. Paul Beth, thanks for having me. Peace. Well, it was a lovely to see you. It's the end of the show. Bring on tomorrow. Where shall we go? Where shall we go? Say goodnight to the ginger man One last ice cream for the bearded man Pistachio